good effort and fun goes into picking the songs they listen to on the drive out. Yeah, you mentioned that. The playlist, we uh, got them from Dan Hewitt over at uh, Johnson. He mentioned that... Uh, uh, but it's given us the experience we need, again, to go to Mars. Um, the longer we're in space, the more we learn, um, and that prepares us for that eventual trip away from... NASA astronaut Raja Chari. Thanks, Daryl. Good to have you here, Colonel. Thanks. Yeah, and it was a cool shot there. You got to just see of the crew arm at night. That's uh, a really cool view with it all lit up on the inside. That's the their path. Beautiful night out. Uh, we've got a nice cool breeze. Temperatures are in the upper 60s, and launch weather is cooperating wonderfully. We have only a 5% chance for a purpose. Exactly. So those chevrons are the direction you would go if there was an emergency egress. So uh, if there's any kind of problem on the pad, uh, the crew's well trained to basically be able to egress on their own if um, if the closeout crew has already left. And those chevrons are a visual way to see exactly where you would go, and they take you eventually to SpaceX launches on Monday. It's going to be a busy Monday, <laughs> Roger. Yeah. We got Starlink uh, off the pad 40 on Monday afternoon. Followed by another Starlink launch out of Vandenberg. The pace here at the um, Space Center has really picked up, and that's just a testament to how much this place has transformed to become a commercial spaceport. Yeah, it is uh, very neat just driving around. A white room is a term first used during the Gemini era, literally for the description of the color of the room, but it's not really much of a room, right? It's pretty tight. Yeah, it's more of yes, it's a re exactly. It's more of a clean room. You see, they're grabbing name tags there. Um, Aye, so yeah. they'll basically kind of a tradition that uh, started with the first Dragon launch of grabbing the, some of the closeout crew's name tags. Post person. Thanks, Steve. And here comes Sultan and Andre. Dragon SpaceX for awareness. We're going to be triggering an onboard manual alert. Uh, you'll see this temporarily, no corrections required. So you can hear the core talking to Steve. SpaceX Dragon Talk. So when they first get in, this is doing an initial check just to tell them they're in the seat. There'll be more formal comm checks later, and what you hear the core tell them that they're going to they're gonna see an enunciation of an alert, but it, there's nothing required, so they're um, just giving a heads up so that the crew is not surprised when they see it. Might get some FOD on the seal, and you might need some right. extra time. You it's always nice to, nice to be ahead of the timeline versus rushing to catch up, especially uh, you know when you've got an instantaneous launch window. You want to preserve as much margin as you can. So you can see uh, Sultan and Andre getting in the, the vehicle the capsule, especially when it's in microgravity that can either get ingested, inhale, cause an eye injury, or damage something. And the foreign object debris, Raja, actually the prevention of it, begins all the way back in Hawthorne before oh yeah. the spacecraft yep. that you get to see it like that you can see the guy wires that uh, lead up to the top of the tower our uh, helicopters are up there performing Six dragon crew is ready for comm checks SpaceX copies stand by for umbilical comm check all right so they're running a little ahead it looks like um, so the crew's got uh, display giving us some waves yeah are strapped into the seats behind uh, that capsule right there inside Dragon Endeavor. And here's an interesting note about Endeavor, the SpaceX fleet leader in number of flights to and from the station is Endeavor. That's true, yeah. So that's it. Go ahead. Well, so, yeah, I was just I, gonna I, say. I, I watch, yeah, I got to watch Bob and Doug go in. And that's then, right. Yeah, and then, yeah, and yeah, it's, been, it's cool that we have we are proving it. quite a nod to the people that got us to where we're at, which uh. is very true that none of us would be where we're at without our families, the, the flight controllers, the trainers that got us there. And so we actually love the term turtle and don't take it as an insult at all. But yeah, we had to, every crew takes a while to develop theirs with ours. Actually, our turtle was named Fowl, which is in this, Raja. Yeah, this is a great night for a launch and uh, let's hope the vehicle stays on progress. Uh, like you mentioned, right now, uh, the next big thing will be when they arm the LES, but before they uh, do that, the, they have to... Position. Uh, inside the capsule, there are four crew members looking pretty comfy and uh, pretty relaxed prior to liftoff. As you can see, that crew on board Dragon, they're waiting for the next instructions, uh, which will be to stow the crew arm for launch and to arm the launch escape system. Now, once the launch director gives the final instructions to the launch team, the crew arm sequence will be armed and initiated. Now, we should get a good view of the axis arm as it swings away from the capsule, which will take about two minutes to completely move out of the way. Checking in on the range continues to be go for launch there. Mon they are monitoring the clearance area around the launch pad as, as well as the downrange landing zones uh, in the unlikely event that an abort is 
um, is called for in that escape sequence, um, we have to make sure that the weather for those downrange landing zones is also acceptable. But everything is looking there, looking good on the weather front. Pull is complete and the team is ready for crew access arm retract, propellant load, and launch. I think we got a little bit of sense of motion uh, from the wind, but uh, I don't know if we were just imagining it <laughs> or not. Because <laughs> there's a whole lot of your senses are super per, like heightened, uh, heightened yeah. right now, yeah. Um, so we actually did talk through, I do remember talking to them, as we talked earlier about how you're kind of going through different scenarios and timelines. And uh, one thing is if there is an emergency egress button in the capsule, but one of the things, the big difference is now that the arm is swung back is you definitely want to make sure the arm has swung back towards you in the event of an egress. That makes mm. sense because you don't want to step out into no. <laughs> nothing. Because at this point, the, the LES is not hot, but the arm so has the retracted arm would away. Have to come the arm back. has to swing back. Uh -huh. Yep, and so the crew at this point, uh, in preparation for that, will be putting the visors down. We have elements outside. Uh, SpaceX, uh, Dragon, arming and launch escape system. Okay, so that's uh, Steve telling them that they're SpaceX copies. initiating the command. Like we mentioned, they'll do it. Actually, you can hear this. You can definitely hear this uh, and feel it in the vehicle. There's some uh, valves that are opening that are to the Super Dracos, which are the engines that would fire to initiate an abort, and those valves are safe until this point. So this command is essentially unsafing those valves, and you can barely very definitely hear and feel that inside the capsule. Those Super Draco engines you mentioned, Raja, capable of moving Dragon half a mile in just 7.5 seconds, equivalent to a peak velocity of 436 miles per hour. It is a densified liquid oxygen, or LOX. Densified meaning that it's kept much colder than typical for launch vehicles. Therefore, it takes up less volume, which allows for us to put more of that oxygen. And make their ascent. At about 50 seconds into flight, Falcon 9's engines will throttle down to help pass through the period of maximum dynamic pressure on the rocket, or what we typically refer to as max Q. It's worth noting that once we hit max Q, the vehicle will be going supersonic. Now, once we are through the period of maximum dynamic pressure, we can throttle up our nine Merlin engines again. From there, at about two and a half minutes into flight, we have a series of three events that will happen in rapid succession. First is Miko, or main engine cutoff. This is where all nine Merlin 1D engines shut off in preparation for stage separation, which is our second event. This is where the first stage detaches from the second stage, with the first stage making its way back to Earth for landing, as a second stage continues its journey with the third event, SES-1, or second stage engine start number one, where the MVAC engine lights up and propel propels the second stage, along with our crew six astronauts, into orbit. As stage two heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit, stage one will execute two burns in order to make its way back down to Earth. The first is the entry burn. That's where three of the M1D engines will reignite and then shut down again. This helps to slow the stage down in preparation for entry back into the Earth's atmosphere. And while that first stage is heading back to Earth, the second stage will cut off its one Merlin engine that was ignited right, right after stage separation. Once this happens, we'll wait for a confirmation of a good orbital insertion. About 90 seconds after Dragon gets into orbit, Falcon 9 will land back on Earth. The landing burn is just a single engine burn, but it's powerful enough to bring the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship at about nine and a half minutes into the mission. While Falcon 9 first stage is landing, Dragon is preparing to separate from the second stage. At about three minutes after the second stage gets into orbit, we should have a great view of Dragon with its four-person crew drifting away from the second stage. Once Dragon is a short distance away, it'll begin checking out its Draco maneuvering thrusters to make sure Dragon continues to increase separation distance from that second stage. It's worth noting that these are not the Super Draco engines that would be used during an abort scenario. About 40 seconds after separation, Dragon's nose cone deploy sequence will begin. It will take roughly four minutes for the nose cone hooks to unlatch and open, exposing its guidance navigation controls that will help Dragon autonomously fly to the space station. And lastly, once the nose cone is deployed, the venting of that locks going out into the air. Our next mission is SpaceX. We're honored to 
We are honored to have you aboard Dragon Capsule Endeavour today for its next trip to the International Space Station. We wish you a great mission, good luck, Godspeed, and enjoy the ride. And thank you very much for those kind words. We'd like to thank all the trainers, technicians, engineers, decision makers, and planners who have uh, defined our mission ahead and trained us and then given the faith in us to execute that mission. And Crew 6 is ready to launch. Thank everyone. This comes the completion of liquid oxygen uh, loading on both the first and second stage. For now, T minus five minutes, 15 seconds. We're gonna stand by for that call of configuring for terminal count. Crew six in their seated positions and ready for launch. Terminal count. Tanks are pressurizing for Strombay recheck. All right, and we heard both of those calls. Dragon onboard computers are gonna take control of the vehicle. We should be seeing the clamp arm at the very terminate the flight, Falcon issuing an abort. Startup. Dragon is in countdown. T minus one minute and counting. Dragon is in countdown. Everything's looking good for launch. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. Dragon, copy. Go for launch. T-minus 30 seconds. T-minus 30 seconds and counting. All teams pulled go. Fifteen seconds. Ready for an on-time launch for the instantaneous T-minus 10, run. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. Engine's full power and lift off. The crew six. Go Dragon. Go Falcon. Crew six. Now launching on Endeavour's first flight to the International Space Station. Vehicles pitching down range. 1.7 million pounds of thrust provided by the nine Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. Hearing good calls. Stage one propulsion is nominal. are different abort modes that are called that allow the ground teams and the crew to track about the position of the Falcon 9 and the Dragon as they make their way up the eastern seaboard. An engine cutoff, which will be followed quickly by stage separation and second engine start, which is the ignition of that and back engine on the second stage. Two Copy, Stage two alpha. separation confirmed. There you can see on your screen confirmation of stage separation as well as ignition of that second stage engine. Stage one entry run startup. And there you can see stage two, FTS has saved. on your screen that first stage entry burn has begun. That booster sees high drag, which actually scrubs roughly 70% of the velocity by the time that the landing burn begins. So about another 10 seconds of this entry burn. Again, three engines relit, the center and two Stage radio engine engines. And now off the coast of Shannon, Ireland. 
standing by for Seco. MVAC shut down. Page one, letting burn. And there we heard the call out indicating that land disarmed. For Dragon Endeavor. Page one, landing lead deploy. Attempting to land on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Page one, landing is first trip to space, and therefore its first landing. An eruption of applause here at SpaceX Mission Control.